and uh, we are ready. Georgie, we ready? We are ready. And you are the presenter, so that is perfect. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for another great CEU course, Capital Lighting Showrooms, and our website, 1-800-Lighting.com. Always strive to provide value to our pro community, and this course on Facebook is just another example of that. Mahatma Gandhi said, Liz, uh, no, he didn't say Liz. He, he may have said Liz, but he didn't say it in this particular case. case. We're going to have to start again. <laughs> uh, your screen is being shared, and uh, let, let's get started. Thank you all for joining us today for another great CEU course, Capital Lighting Showrooms, and our website, 1-800-Lighting.com. Always strive to provide value to our pro community, and this course is just another example of that. Mahatma Gandhi said, live, live as if you were to die tomorrow. <laughs> why, why, is that, why is that funny? I can't say live. Live. I keep saying live. 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 I want to. Shared, and we are ready to go. So thank you all for joining us today for another great CEU course, Capital Lighting Showrooms, and our website, 1-800-Lighting.com. Always strive to provide value to our pro community, and this course is just another example of that. Mahatma Gandhi said, Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. So in the spirit of living forever, I applaud all of you for joining us today to learn some new methods, perhaps confirm what you're doing is correct, and get a lot of good ideas on how to build your brand and grow your business on Facebook. And we can get started. I'd like to introduce our presenter, Georgie Brown. Georgie is the founder and managing partner of Big Couch Media Group. Big Couch has worked with Capital for the past many, many years, and Georgie is a very trusted advisor as well as being a social media and online marketing expert. Georgie, take it away. Thank you, Eric, and welcome everyone to this exciting EU on brought to us by our great friends at Capital Lighting, and I'm truly thrilled to be here to share a few simple and basic tips that can help you Facebook to supplement your marketing and really build your business, make, really making this part of your marketing mix. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover during this CEU. First, I want to talk about the power of Facebook. Then I'm going to answer specific, a few specific questions why you should care about this, uh, especially for designers. We're then going to walk through establishing uh, a presence on Facebook or enhancing your presence, because I'm sure many of you have already have a uh, uh, personal page, certainly, uh, maybe not a business page. We're going to be really talking about business pages today. Then we're going to talk about uh, building your base, your, your fan base, and more importantly, engaging with that fan base. So let's talk about the power of Facebook. And this is, we're going we're to just talk about the numbers now. Worldwide, there are over 1.39 billion monthly active users on Facebook. Um, what this means for you, Facebook is too big for you to ignore for your business. And although Facebook growth has slowed in the U.S., Facebook still remains by far the most popular social network on the planet, having a 70% market share of all online adults following social networks. It's pretty massive. 
every 60 seconds on Facebook, there are 510 comments are posted, 293,000 statuses are updated, and 136,000 photos are uploaded. So it's just, it's a massive, very engaged social community. There's over almost 5 billion pieces of content shared daily. And now, according to Facebook, there are over 30 million small businesses with a presence on this social network. So why should you care about it? Although the numbers are, are big, we need to care about the numbers. If Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest in the world. One in three people you meet will be on Facebook. So reason number one, your customers are on Facebook and you need to be where they are. Reason number two, People share their lives on Facebook, and more importantly, they discuss brands they like. And you know, I always I ask uh, business owners this question all the time: Are you in the discussion when someone likes your page? It's going to show up in their newsfeed, and what that means is when they share it on their newsfeed that their friends are going to be exposed to your brand. And the average Facebook user has over 200 friends to talk about your brand. Um, and that number keeps going up. Uh, I think the last time we did this CEU was somewhere in the low hundreds. So that keeps uh, increasing and the base keeps uh, increasing. So. Reason number two, this is Facebook is a great way for you to amplify the message around your brand. Reason number three, Facebook is an immediate communication tool where people really go to convert. It is a great platform to engage with your customers thanking them for positive comments, but also dealing with any issues. If you're like many of us, when we don't have a good experience with the brand, um, you know, we post it on their social media. So another great reason is Facebook can actually become a part of your customer service. Reason four. So people use Facebook to go and interact, and more importantly, have fun. So this is where you can be a little more informal, informal and really show the brand's personality versus maybe your website where you're being a little bit more formal and more corporate. So no, Facebook can be one of the channels that you use to really humanize your brand. Reason, num reason number five, integrating a social media strategy will help you with your rankings in search engines like Google because Facebook, like other social channels that we've talked about in other CEUs, have authority. So having a presence on Facebook with links back to your website help you in becoming popular and relevant in search engines. 
You can also link your Facebook to all of your other social channels, as well as your website and blog. So, you know, this idea of uh, expanding your digital presence, and one of my favorite terms is this idea of casting a wider net. Reason number six, Facebook helps you measure your efforts so you don't have to guess. And I always, one of you know, the things that I preach um, is if you can't measure it, don't do it. The good news is, is that Facebook is a tool to um, help us measure. And what's great about their tracking tools is that you can actually track what uh, your followers um, like related to your, your pages and your posts. So, um, and you can also look at location, where are, where are your fans based, their gender, their age. So again, we're going to get into a little bit more detail um, on uh, their insights. But you, there's a lot of great measurement tools. And last but certainly, you know, not, uh, not least, is it is free. Now, some parts of Facebook, and there's been a lot of changes um, and for those of you who already are on Facebook using business pages, you've noticed um, some changes. And because they are a business, a lot of um, a lot of their efforts have been shifted to build up uh, the areas that help them generate revenue. The things that we're going to talk about today is really just about um, establishing kind of a basic presence, optimizing, you know, your, your current, current efforts. Um, but I am going to talk a little bit in detail on some of the areas that I recommend that you start testing from um, a paid, uh, paid per perspective. So now let's talk about getting started. So if you're and I'm sure most of you are already on Facebook, but um, if you're not, you don't already have a personal page, um, in order to, we're going to be talking about business pages today, you need to start with a personal account. Uh, and so if you don't, it's pretty simple. You visit Facebook.com and you get signed up. I mean, it's, it's one, two, three. Now, one of the things that I, I like to just make a distinction is that people have profiles and companies have pages. So today we're going to be talking about specifically about pages. So sometimes, you know, what you don't want to do is set up your company as a personal profile. But you really don't want to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So next, we're going to, now we have our personal profile, we're going to create our business page. And you can do this in a couple different ways. So you can sim simply go to facebook.com slash slash pages, or you can use the drop down in the right hand corner and click on create pages. Next, you will select a page type. And for purposes of this CEU, there are probably two possible page types. There's local, business, or place. And this would be if you have a physical storefront excuse me, where you want people to visit your business. The next one would be where uh, brand or product, where you're selling specific types of service or product. And this is, for instance, like this is where Capital, they actually have a brand or product page. So 
I'm going to use the brand um, and the, the brand and product or product page for purposes of this demonstration. Next, you will select a category. And as you can see, there's a category for home decor. Because just like in other CEUs that you may have attended um, on social media with Capital, home decor is a very popular uh, topic. Uh, companies are, are very popular because um, you know, it's, a, it's very engaging. People want to share things about home decor and, and that sort of thing. So this is really good for all of you designers. And this is why I just encourage you um, to, to really uh, get involved in social media. So you'll then, once you select a category, you're going to put in your business name and then simply click Get Started. So next will be Facebook is then going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to get your page set up. Make sure when adding a description, you include keywords that are important to your business. And what I mean by keywords, these are terms that you would like to be um, associated with. So things like um, you know, kitchen design or uh, coastal design or Boca Raton interior designer, how people are going to find you. And this is important because this will help your page be found in search for those relevant terms on Facebook. So when people are using the search bar and they type in, interior design, Boca Raton, that your page actually would come up as one, as, as one of Facebook's search results. You'll also want to make sure you include the URL to your uh, website or your blog. And then the next piece is um, customizing your, UR, your Facebook URL. So now you can skip this if you don't, because you know, you're not sure. Um, and you can come back and update it. But you really want to make sure that you, you get one chance to change it on Facebook. So you really want to make sure that um, you know what your, uh, you want your Facebook URL to be. And one of the best practices that I try to tell everybody Try to make those consistent, if you can, across all your social media channels. Sometimes that's not possible because there's so many social uh, accounts. If you can, you know, make that, uh, try to make that consistent. George, did you say you get one chance? To change it, yeah. They, they give you they... one. You, you can change it, but you can only change it once. And is there a period of time that you can change it in? Like no. the first one time no. they let you change it. Okay. They let you, yeah. They let you say, hey, I want to change it. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I learned that through trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. So, Very yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're doing it for a client, you know, like what we do, um, that, that you don't want to you don't want to make mistakes, right? Um, next, um, you'll be prompted to upload a photo, either upload it from your computer or your website. And, you know, in all of this, when you're just doing the setup process, you can always skip this and come back to it later. You can always edit your page. You're not, um, so if you, you know, you want to get the page set up, uh, but you, you know, you really want to go find a nice photo, you can always updated and, um, and change it. Then um, it's going to prompt you to add uh, a quick link to your favorites um, 
on your home page, and that's for your personal home page of that left hand rail, um, so that you know it's your pages you need to get to. Next step is important. So Facebook can help you when other Facebook members find your page because it is relevant, and you know the key to that is relevant. So you'll be asked um, for things like location. So for instance, if you're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, what ages of people are you targeting? Is it mainly women? What are they interested in? Um, and they have a bunch of different categories. So as you can see here, I just started putting in deep, you know, do it yourself. And you see like home improvement, um, even popular brands that might have similar audiences. So the more information you can put in sort of this preferred audience, um, the more likely your target will be served up your page because it is relevant. And there you go. You now have a very basic page. For purposes of this, I didn't throw in the, um, I did not upload uh, the photo. But as you can see, we still have a lot of work to do here. So. Now, let's look at uh, Capital Lighting's page um, and see how they have optimized uh, their page. So you want to make sure that your Facebook timeline graphic, that's that big graphic at the top, and the profile photo is visually appealing. Um, and I, I'm sort of preaching to the choir here for interior designers. If you're starting a page, obviously you want to have you know beautiful imagery here. If you have a logo like you did here for Capital, I would suggest you put that in the small um, thumbnail. Uh, but visual is um, you know it, the, the visual appeal of the page is really important. And additionally. Um, and this is some, a new feature um, that was added uh, sometime last year, is they now have a call to action that can be automatically included in these graphics. And so in this, in this case, we use Shop Now. And that Shop Now button goes directly to Capital Lighting's um, face, uh, Facebook uh, website. But you can also have a contact us or sign up for email. And so they have different choices of call to action that now, so that's the great thing about the page is it's now really actionable, not just from interacting with the post, but you can also have you know, a call to action. Maybe you want to say subscribe to my blog or read my blog. You can um, you can do that as well. So I just pulled a few examples of pages that I really like that were uh, relevant. Um, Jeff Lewis, who's a you know, very popular uh, designer in the Northeast, he's got a beautiful page. Um, Herman Miller is another one. Just uh, and these people, you can see they have tens of thousands of uh, followers. And then, uh, of course, related um, would be uh, Glidden, you know, the paint, uh, the paint brand. So um, just, give, just get showing you sort of visually how they leverage um, uh, uh, the, the, their design on Facebook. So now another important note is that just because you set up the page doesn't mean that you cannot allow others to administer the page. Um, and so by giving people uh, 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 different permissions, that doesn't mean that you would give somebody entire permission. So they have different levels of permission on the page depending on what roles you have. So somebody who's an admin has 
full access. So that's kind of, that would be you probably as the business owner. Um, it, you know, you would want to have full admin access, but maybe you have somebody else in, on your team or your business partner that you'd also like to have administrative access. Then you have the editor, which has, you know, kind of the next level of permission. So they can edit the page, they can delete, create and delete posts, they can send messages as the page, um, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, the permissions kind of go down from there. And kind of the lowest level is the analyst. You know, you might have somebody on your team. Maybe it's the assistant. Maybe it's your, your daughter. <laughs> they work for you. <laughs> Free. Um, like my daughter. Um, and uh, maybe it's somebody that is running the report. Um, but, and they don't, you don't either really want them to have full access. So I love... Uh, how Facebook has made it very flexible um, to give different people the uh, types of roles that they need. That they need, and you know, I just I hear from quite a few business owners that I talk to about um, engaging in social media, and they want to be able to sort of delegate this without giving somebody the full keys to the kingdom. So this is important uh, important to note. So to set these administrative roles, you can find this easily under the settings right from your business page. So it's, just, it's right there under settings. So now you have your page and you want to build your fans or your likes. And here's just a few ideas to consider. And as I, you know, mentioned at the beginning of the CEU, today we're just going through the basics of this um, because I'm sure many of you are just getting started or you have a page and I just really want to inspire you to do a few things. Um, that's always kind of my goal here. So the first thing that you could do is include the Facebook like box on your website or blog. And you do this by using the various social plugins that Facebook offers. And this way, people can like your Facebook page without leaving your website or blog. And here, I've got our dear friend, that's actually Eric Lieberfeld from Capital Lighting. So if you've never seen him before, isn't he cute? Um, on the right. And on the right. He's, uh, he's on the right. And, and that's uh, Nathan and our Frampton friend, from uh, Fanimation. Yeah. So probably many of you have uh, heard of uh, the Fanimation product. But um, anyway, so and to find these social plugins, when you go to the Help Center on Facebook, it gives you an easy step-by-step -step on how to install these plugins to your um, your website or your blog, and you may either do this yourself, or you might have somebody who actually manages your website or blog. It's not technically complicated, um, and it's you know it's just very straightforward. But that's one way to start to build uh, your your likes and your and your fans. Next are invite your friends, family, colleagues, and customers who would really be more than happy to connect on Facebook. And all you have to do is ask. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, with the recent changes made by Facebook, it is getting harder and harder to get good placement organically for your page or post. So another way to use uh, Facebook is uh, through their advertising to promote your page. And you can find that just very easily. Obviously, they make it very easy for you to find this. Um, and it's at the top right-hand side of your page. 
even if you have a very small budget, you can get very targeted, and it's so simple to create ads. And the great news is, is Facebook has the tools for you to analyze your results. So in this case, um, and you'll see the tabs at the top, the desktop news feed, that's the main news feed. It, you can uh, specifically tar target mobile news feeds or that right-hand rail um, of uh, somebody's Facebook page. And so you do everything from uploading and repositioning the image to writing the copy. If you are a designer and you're in Eatontown, New Jersey, you don't, obviously you don't want to be targeting people outside of the area that you're servicing. So you, you're not wasting your advertising dollars. Um, and then you can also include interest. And this might be where you're going to say, and for purposes of this, we said shopping and fashion, interior design, but there's, and you could put up to uh, 10 interests in that uh, choosing the audience. Then we could pick age. So if your sweet spot is people, you know, women 35 to 65, um, you, again, you're just, you're further refining where your message is going to show up. And then your daily budget. So you don't have to worry that if, and in this case, you know, I put in $20. Um, you could spend more. But if you haven't done this before, you might want to just start with a very, very small budget and then see what those, uh, what those results are. Next is you also want to make sure you cross-promote your Facebook on your other social media channels. Um, such as LinkedIn and Twitter. So, you know, you sort of want to cross-pollinate all your social channels. And it's just, again, it's a great way to cast a wider net. Next would be including your social media in your offline marketing communication. And this is just a small example of a postcard. But things like if you do uh, direct mail pieces, uh, any ads that you do, if you have a storefront, you could put a little uh, decal um, on the door. You know, those you can get printed up uh, pretty uh, inexpensively. You put it in your uh, email signature, uh, your business card. Um, maybe you want to get a tattoo. I don't know. You, you decide. But, um, you know, thinking about all the touch points where you are communicating um, with your customers, you know, promote the fact that you have Facebook and any of your other social channels. Because in general, people have kind of their preference of the channels that, um, that they use. But, Certainly integrating that into offline communication is going to be very, very important. So next is, so now you have your page. You've uh, started to build um, your fan base. But now the key is, how are you going to keep these people engaged with quality posts? So it's very important to keep in mind. So you want to make posts relevant to your business and more importantly to your audience. So the answering the question, you know, looking at your post from their perspective, why should they care about this? Is this information uh, helpful? I, you know, I think this is a great opportunity for you designers as people are looking for tips on how to beautify their home all the time. They, because they don't know. You, is, because you're in the business, you take for granted that everybody knows that this blue and that go together, or this is transitional, and you know how to you know, put a room together. Um, I will tell you, it's, you know, it's 
your expertise um, is very valuable to people. So again, when you're thinking about your post, think about why people should care. So you also, you want to be authentic so that fans, your Facebook fans, will enjoy engaging with your, with your brand. This is not an ad. This isn't your website copy. This is a conversation. So you want to be very authentic. And I think if you have um, listened to some of our other CEU courses, we talk about, uh, I think specifically and when we talked about blogging, is establishing your brand personality. You know, what's your, what's your tone, what, and maybe it's what you're specializing in as well. But you want to be authentic. Um, also, use images and, and, uh, and videos, and I'm going to talk a little bit um, this, uh, later on in some of uh, something new that uh, Facebook is doing. So using imagery is going to be, and videos is going to be really, really important, and especially important and relevant to uh, what you're doing in the design community. Um, you want to ask questions. What do they think? What's your, uh, you know, let's say you were, you created a post, the five biggest mistakes in kitchen, des uh, kitchen design, and you could end that post with, tell us a big mistake or an issue you're having. You want to actually encourage a conversation. It's a two-way, it's a two-way street. Also, you want to make sure you promptly respond to any comments. So, you know, this is, this is, I'm not going to emphasize this, if somebody, people's perception of social media is that it's immediate. And so, just be aware that if somebody posts a comment, you should be responding in a timely manner. It doesn't have to be in five minutes. If you can do five minutes, that would be great. Maybe you have somebody in your office that might be able to monitor your page, and this is where you set them up with some type of role on your Facebook page. But um, I just can't emphasize that enough, because if you don't respond to comments, um, people will likely uh, stop following your brand. Provide special offers for your fans. I mean, you could even, and you, we've probably all seen this, you could create themes like Free Fridays or, you know, whatever. You could create different themes. Now, you don't want to be promotional all the time, but people like to get special stuff. Um, so again, you want to keep it, this is all about engagement. So providing special offers or special content for your fans could be great. You want to be current with events, holidays, and, and, and seasons. And again, around this audience, the design community, it's just a great platform to be able to share, uh, you know, design tips, for uh, the spring, right? Everybody, especially those uh, people uh, who've been up north and it's been a horrible winter and I hear it's getting warmer, but people are thinking about the spring and what kind of tips could you be providing them for the spring? And the other part of that is what's some other conversations, what's trending, what's, what's topical? Um, maybe a celebrity, uh, was just bought a new house and it was in the news and it's trending uh, in in news channels and on social media. You could get in on on that uh, on that conversation. And the last thing is make sure you post regularly. And so you know one of the things that um, we like to suggest that everybody you know when we when we consult with businesses that they post daily, but sometimes that's not possible for small businesses. So, but pick a schedule 
and try to stick with it. So if it's weekly, you're hosting weekly, also set that expectation with the people that are following you, that you, know, you post every Wednesday. Um, and maybe that schedule is created across all your social media, from your blog to your you know, Facebook to your LinkedIn to Twitter, and if you are on Instagram, that you're kind of pushing this content out through um, all those channels on the same day. You kind of have, again, a schedule. So one of um, the things I just wanted to point out is um, in the past year, Facebook has added a number of new types of posts, including special offers and events. So when you're actually posting something, let's say you're doing uh, a design event, uh, you know, a kitchen design event, and you want to invite people, you can actually do that right from the post. You don't have to go to events. We are going to talk about events, but they've kind of expanded that, um, that capability. So another area that you might consider allocating some advertising dollars is on boosted posts. Um, and so, as I mentioned earlier, just because of the nature of Facebook business, because their, their model is advertising, that they have made it, you know, over the past few years, they've made a lot of changes and they're obviously giving preference to companies who are paying advertising dollars. So, again, this might be an area So we talked about promoting your page before, the whole page, getting people to come to the page. Now, this feature is about advertising, or what they say, boosting a particular post. So what this will do, it's going to place your, place your post higher in the news feeds of the people who like your page, as, uh, as well as finding a broader audience um, that is targeted. So very similar to promoting the overall page, but now you're just boosting a very relevant post. So maybe that could be a blog post. It could be a special offer. Um, you know, again, if it's something timely, um, you know, you just you may want to uh, you may want to test this. And you know, doing this is is simple. Um, so it's just like promoting the page. A window's going to pop up for you to establish the budget and the targeting, and um, and it'll actually, as you're you know refining your um, your targeting, it's going to give you sort of the estimated reach that that post. Could, um, could get to based on that targeting. So they really give you some great tools um, to, uh, from an advertising. And that's been an area that obviously they have been uh, investing in for all, all the reasons that we would, we would know. So next, if you have a physical location, you should encourage or possibly incentivize people that visit your location um, to check in. Um, and this is a great way to gain exposure. And so remember, when someone is checking in at your business, they're broadcasting that to all their friends. So Anybody who's my friend, and whenever I'm at Capital Lighting, I'm always checking in. So actually encourage people to do that. I actually have my, where I get my hair done, if I check in, they give me a free, uh, like, gourmet water. So every time I go there, because I really like this water that they have, I absolutely check in. So think about that. Get and have fun with it. You could, you know, you could use it in a lot of different ways. But again, it's just another, it's, it's sort of like a stamp of approval. So using check-ins can just be a great way to cast a wider net. 
And so just a, here's a point, a point on check-in, George, Georgie. You know, I know people are, are concerned about how often they post. And when you check in, it does show up on your, on your news feed, obviously, because that's the whole thing yeah. from the, the retailer or the salon that they, they want to tell everybody um, right. that you know that, that you're going, going to them. Um, and from the, from the retailer's perspective, great. From the user's perspective, or, and, and when you're using a business page, okay, I want to show businesses I support. But is there ever a time where you think I'm, I'm posting too much? I know our, our designers and, and people that we work with usually fall into the, the trap of posting too little because they're so busy and um, it's not top of mind. But is there ever the trap of posting too much, or are you going to get to that as well? Well, um, I wasn't really going to cover that. So I think we all know people, if you're on Facebook, who yeah. post, post too that much. They, they post, I'm at the gas station. I'm at the, uh, <laughs> you know, and they left the gas station and now they're, you know, at Publix. And, you know, so, you know, there is a balance. Um, you know, I think. From um, you know, from a business perspective, we want people to check in, and I think if we give them the right reasons um, and the right motivation to check in, mm -hmm. um, and you know the right value proposition, right? I want to check in because I'm at Capital Lighting, and Lorraine is doing a great job helping me put lighting in my new home. I'm like so right. excited about that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think That's actually that's true. That, you know, <laughs> I, I want and that's actually true. Lorraine is helping me, you know, uh, make make my life brighter. So exactly. I wanna tell people. I you know, and I you know, now I probably err on the side of, you know, I'm in the business and I like to post. I don't post when I go to the grocery store. Right. Um, you so know, it's, it's, if, if, it, if it's done in a supportive way and you have to have some brand affinity and you have to have some care for the brand and the incentive has to be, like you said, it's water, but it, it's a little meaningful. I'm doing something for you. I do expect something in return. So it, it's a, it is a fine line on all, on all sides. But like you, like you often say, try something. Try something. Yeah, you can, you can try, try it. And by the way, you know, so then, Eric, we're friends on Facebook, so you'll see, you know, I'm going to be checking in tomorrow to get my water and get my hair done. Um, and, you know, I'll post, I got free water for, you know. I mean, so, right. you know, I, I would, I guess, my from a business perspective, um, you know, we want to encourage people to check in at our business if we have a physical location. That's just great. Um, from a person perspective, you know, friends, there are some people who, you know, take it to the nth degree, and, you know, we just have to, right. to sort of balance that, I guess. But a, lot, a, a, lot of, a lot of designers do have, have small studios. Some of them have larger. Some of them have... Uh, uh, showrooms, so it would be a great place for them to just put in that that check-in ability. And yeah. once they've made a client, and that client becomes a friend, that friend is gonna be happy to say, "I'm I'm visiting with my designer," and and right. give them a shout out. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, and I Go think on. you know, as, especially in the design community. I mean, you know, because I'm working with a designer, it's like that's kind of like a cool thing. I don't know, you know, like it's also. Like, I want to tell people I'm working with a designer. <laughs> you know, I have uh -huh. bad taste, therefore, you know, I have a good you, need, you need our services. Perfect. I, I, I need your services. So, okay, so another way to engage with your fans is if you host events. So this is, you can go, there's an area where you can just create events or you could do it right from a post. So they've kind of made that feature um, a lot easier and um, you can really, if you host events and if you are in the design community, I would hope that you would host events and you can also, you can promote these. So everything can be advertised that we're talking about, by the way, um, as well. And then um, you can easily uh, schedule posts in advance. 
So, because I hear a lot from people that I don't have time, and but maybe you have time on you know Sunday night, you know while you're getting ready for the week, or maybe at the end of the day on Friday, you could actually um, schedule posts. Um, so you could pick the type of post you want to add. You just it's very simple. You click the the clock button. You pick the year, the month, the day you want the post to appear, and then um, you click schedule. Now, having said that, if you can be more timely, meaning your posts are real time, especially if you're trying to, um, you know, kind of jump on current trending conversations, uh, you know, you probably want to. You probably want to do that, but this is certainly a way for you to be to make it more manageable. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, point out is uh, recently, I think just back, you know, back in the latter part of 2014, Facebook um, significantly enhanced its capability for their video page, and so you know, if you've seen this already, you'll see, hmm, this kind of looks like YouTube. And uh, so they see the power of YouTube. You know, YouTube's the second largest search engine in the world, next to Google. Um, so you can now use Facebook. So if you if you have videos, and if you're thinking about videos, this is just because sometimes I have people say, "Yeah, we really want to do videos," and they don't have to be you know high quality broadcasts. You could be taking videos with your you know iPhone six with one of your projects and you're thinking about it, it's like, okay, I put it on YouTube and then what happens, maybe I have it in my blog, on my website, but now um, you can actually have very similar to YouTube, you can create a gallery and so this is things like you can have a featured video and you can also be creating playlists and, and different things like that. So again, you know, this is one of the areas I think very specific to our industry that um, you would really want to be thinking about, about videos and this new video gallery is pretty awesome. So um, the last thing is, um, you know, I just want to, I talked a lot about metrics and, and that sort of thing. So as I mentioned, Facebook has a very robust tool for you to uh, be measuring you know, your likes, uh, your reach, how many people did you add, what was your engagement this week versus last week, there's actually what are the most, your most popular posts, also competitors. So I encourage you to really use these metrics and review them to kind of decide, okay, well I did this post and I did that post, I did this post on, you know, fan, uh, choosing a fan versus uh, choosing landscape lighting and the one for fans was really popular so maybe I need to be writing more content around fans. So this is just another way for you to be thinking um, and tools and measurements on what your content strategy should be, what people are interested in, what are, you know, what are they engaging in. So in summary, the keys to success on Facebook are obviously build your page, you want to connect with people, you want to engage with the audience, and you want to try to influence the friends of your fans. So once you have fans, you know, you really, your, your goal is to get them the one to many, get them to bring over uh, and this is how you get new possible new customers. So, so I want to thank everybody uh, for uh, taking time to uh, attend um, the CEU course today. And I hope that um, you've been inspired to get more involved, even at the most basic level, um, in really uh, using Facebook to grow your business. Awesome. Thank you, Georgie. That was a terrific presentation. Just um, and, I, and you may have touched on it a little bit, but, but just a question about, uh, I know several people have 
one Facebook account versus many Facebook accounts? Uh, and when you uh, say one for business, one for one for personal, and you know, so so many of our designers, their work is their life, and keeping it, it's okay to share, like you said at the beginning, it's okay to share um, some some personal stuff, a little less formal. Um, but there is again that fine line. If your Facebook presence is is to strictly grow your business, I guess you probably probably would recommend having two separate two separate accounts. Well, or, I uh, mean the ben a business the account and the and the personal yeah. account. So the benefit of having the business account business page is that you'll have all of the features and functionality that we talked about today right. versus a personal page. Right, so personal pages, um, so you're just going to have more features and you'll be able to cast a wider net. So, you know, it doesn't, you know, and especially I think you bring up a good point, you know, I'm a designer, maybe I'm a sole proprietor, why do I have to have, you know, Georgie Brown, my personal page and Georgie Brown design, my business page, um, I just think in general, you know, I have, I post things on my personal, even though I have business associates like Eric, that's a friend of mine on my Facebook page, um, because I have a close relationship, I don't have everybody, I'm not personally friended with everybody on my personal page, but I'll pretty much, you know, want anybody to follow you know, my big couch media page. Um, right. But I okay. don't necessarily want them to see, you know, the pictures of my grandchildren. Kind of Great. a thing. So I, I really recommend two pages. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's at that po this point that if you do want to get the CEU, you can go to the assessment and take that. And uh, uh, we'll we'll follow up with you regarding uh, getting you your credits. Um, once again, thank you, Georgie Brown. Terrific content. Appreciate your time and your elucidation of Facebook for Business. Thanks, everybody. We will talk again. Bye. -bye.